going on guys and welcome to another Gearheads Garage production. In today's video we are taking a trip back to the U-Pool as well as we are going to be introducing a new vehicle to the channel. So without further ado, let's get to it. So guys, uh, we are at the pull apart, the U pull up in Winston, and we are fixing to go look for some WJ parts because that's right, guys. Let me welcome you guys to the new vehicle on the channel. This is uh, the new to me 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ. This uh, vehicle, turn the camera around. This vehicle has the uh, 4 liter, not the 4.7 V8, but the uh, inline 6. But uh, pretty solid vehicle, I'd say. Uh, she does have her wear and tear marks, but uh, overall, not too bad. Um, I wanted the 4 liter simply because I'm used to them motors, not saying the 4.7 is bad. I just. I'm not gonna lie, I can't really afford the gas mileage of a V8 right now, so. But uh, she's pretty clean as she is. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the new daily driver because um, I will go over this in a future upload, but um, the Jeep, the XJ is having some issues right now. So, um, here we go. <laughs> um, as far as modifications go, um, this thing is pretty much going to stay stock. Granted, I say that. Um, I am definitely going to be going with um, aftermarket headlights. I'm going to uh, get some uh, black ones that um, are not foggy and have 20 years on them. And um, definitely going to be putting a roof rack up there just because I think they look better with one. Um, other than that, that's about it. Um, as far as interior goes, there, it's uh, it, everything right now is factory. There's nothing aftermarket on this, which is what I like. Um, but eventually, I am going to be going with an aftermarket stereo uh, head unit, and. Either I'm going to keep the stock speakers and find a way to run an amp with a possible 10 or a uh, small 10 or a 12 inch sub somewhere in the back if I can find a place for it to go. Either that or I am going to end up upgrading both front and rear uh, speakers to uh, something more bassy. Um, because I don't know if you guys know, but the black truck when I had it it had a Pioneer um, amp as well as I think a single 12 inch sub took behind the back seat and uh, it barely had enough room and um, but it worked so um, but as far as like wheels and tires go I'm going to wear these out before I do anything I mean right now um, I have some, you know, fairly decent uh, Sumitomos, which uh, I'm not real big of a fan of, but it's good enough for now. Um, but I do want to throw some kind of all-terrains on them when those wear out. Um, 
I have also thrown around the idea of maybe doing aftermarket wheels, maybe doing some, uh, I don't know, maybe matte black uh, Mickey Thompson bullet holes. Um, still throwing around that idea. I have no idea. I probably won't do that till later on though. I kind of want to enjoy it um, like it is right now. So yeah, um, let's get out to the yard and uh, before it starts a torrential downpour on us, which I think it's already started a little bit, but it'll be fine. Um, so yeah. Alright, so there is a 2002 or something along that nature of a WJ that was apparently, it's apparently new to this yard. Uh, apparently, uh, Dad said that they checked it in maybe three or four days ago. But uh, we're going to see if we can't track it down and uh, see if there's anything and we can rub off of it for mine because I need the back glass struts. Alright so guys this is the newer one that Dad was talking about. It's the V8 so it's got the 4.7 in it and this has already been picked a little bit. And, uh, all kinds of stuff. This one's even got the sunroof option in it. This is, what is this? Not on this side. This is a 2001. What I need is these struts right here, but it's a automatic locking thing, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to get to it. But, I'm going to have to figure out a way to keep that thing open. All right, so short term, I couldn't find anything to keep the hatch open, but what I was going after is that little compartment right there. Mine has got the little cubby hole piece, but I haven't seen one like that, which is, oh, what is that? Let's see if I can get that out real quick. All right, so it just started trenchly downpouring, and uh, so I took shelter in the WJ. <laughs> But uh, that is not wanting to budge at all. So I think we're going to have to uh, take a loss on that. But this is some sort uh, kind of like a uh, CD player or something of that sort. I'm not even exactly sure. I've never seen this. But uh, it's screwed in. But I mean, that's, that's a little bit loose. But I'm not going to be able to get this or... Even if I just, it's not worth it to me because I ain't gonna do nothing with it. I just thought it was a little interesting. But, uh, oh well. Yeah, that is, without having a battery in it, I cannot activate the automatic locks on this in order to lift this up. So, uh, that's gonna be a problem there. So, uh, at any rate, it was worth a shot, but, eh. All right, so guys, we are back in the WJ. Um, struck out at the yard, which honestly, I kind of figured I would, but I just wanted to make the trip just in case. But, um, I mean, it is what it is. Um, that that was probably the shortest trip to the U-Pole probably ever. Because, <laughs> I mean, I was in and out there within, like, 20 minutes. I mean, I didn't spend long out there, plus, you know, it's downpouring rain, and I didn't really feel like being out there in the first place, but, eh, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I am uh, enjoying the uh, new Jeep so far. So yeah, guys, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're stopping it for the first time, please consider subscribing to the channel. And, uh, yeah, until next time, we're out. Alright, so guys, for those of y'all who stuck around till the end of the video, I actually, after I made the ending of the video, um, I actually found a good deal on these glass struts. And so, we are going to be replacing these bad boys, um... So let's get to it. 
Alright, so guys, propping it up with my hand, I have one strut loose, as you can see right there. What you have to do on the original ones is there's this little metal band on the side that connects to that piece right there. You have to bend that metal tab back, and it is a T30 Torx screw that just unbolts from right there. And that's how you take it off. Now I've got to do the other side. So, both are on. There is a right and wrong way I found out to put these on. <laughs> Go figure. This one I did the wrong way and ended up boogering up the uh, threads inside that bolt a little bit. But it'll be fine. Um, but what you're supposed to do is there is a washer and a white re plastic uh, retaining little thing that goes onto the end of the bolt. You need to put that on, which I did on both sides. That's not what I messed up on. What I did was I put that in before I did that. You are supposed to put that in before you put that in. Reason being is because you have all this stress up here. And, well, you get this in at an awkward angle, and you nick one little part of the thread, and it don't want to go in. But, uh, we managed to, uh, get it in, and, um, it'll be fine, right? And this one right here, I did that, um, this one went in very smoothly. Um, just had to find the right angle, and it just went right in, and I, uh, put it back in right there. I will mention though that on the old ones were a T35 or a T30 to take off, but these are actually a T35. The old ones and there we go.